Hello everyone, my name is Jagan. So I am adding the embedded domain at Skilllink. So prior to Skilllink, I was working for RNDPC, Renown Sun Business Center India. Um, I am taking care of uh, their uh, powertrain uh, embedded software development. And prior to that, I have been into KPAT technologies. So where I am uh, uh, leading uh, their uh, LND uh, uh, learning and development for uh, AutoSAR and uh, MBD verticals. And prior to that, uh, I was working with companies such as uh, Tata Consultancy Services. With including all this, uh, I have around uh, 11 plus years of experience on uh, teaching, uh, learning and uh, automotive software development. this short video on embedded system, we are going to discuss about some of the very important things that one has to understand uh, about embedded system. See, basically embedded system is all about creating a dedicated software for a dedicated application on a bare minimum hardware. With this formal definition, now let's understand what are different top job, three job roles that's available in Indian market today. And post that, we will try to understand who are the companies who are actually offering these job roles for uh, uh, freshers or uh, whom we call it as graduate engineer trainees. And post that, what are tools and technology that someone has to learn for getting into this domain? And uh, we'll also have a very important look on um, how you can learn this particular uh, tools and technologies. So let's get started. So the three job roles, as I told you, uh, one is on firmware developer or device driver developer. Let's say, for example, I'm reiterating the definition of uh, uh, embedded system. Embedded system is all about developing a dedicated software on a bare minimum hardware. So in that case, so the first job role is the uh, set of members who would be developing the core part of the software. So the second job title is on the application software development. So if you take any software stack, it will have a, a core part or a middleware or a, you could say that as a base software and post that or on top of that, there will be application software that's running. Uh, so just to give you an example, if you have a, a battery management system where uh, there could be an application which is trying to balance the ch cell charges and there will be an application which is trying to monitor the temperature and uh, state of the health and state of the charge of the battery. And there could be a code which is responsible for sending some of the diagnostic data via CAN stack or via a controller area network. And there will be a set of code which would be acting as a driver uh, for your sensor interfacing for others. So you could be able to understand that, that there exists something called as application which is running on top of an operating system or a middleware or on a base software. So the first role uh, is a set of people who dedicatedly devote their time in developing the base software. Whereas the second job role is for the members who are working more towards the application software development. So the third role is, is a biggest uh, large pie, I would say, on uh, the embedded software development lifecycle. So these set of people, verification, validation engineer, ideally they will spend their time in um, verifying, validating the code base that was uh, developed. When I say verifying, it, it means whether the code that has been built is meeting certain compliance. So the code is really safety and reliable enough to get into a very big safety critical system such as battery management system, such as your airbag. So, so that's what a verification uh, engineer will do. A validation engineer will uh, verify or will test whether all the functionalities are really met. So uh, verification and validation is a key part that you could able to end up becoming an application validation engineer or you can able to go to a firmware validation engineer. So there are several roles that will pop out again from this. Now, with having this understanding about the job roles and the embedded technology, now let's get one level deeper. We'll try to understand who are the members who are ideally offering, who are as, like continuously hiring 
embedded engineers. So I have listed some of the important companies uh, who are partnered with Skilling for uh, recruitment. Uh, so these companies are hiring with us uh, on a very large number on a month on month basis on a very bigger scale. So uh, l- let me read out this for you. So Science Technologies and Tata Elixir to with whom we have created a co-branded courses especially on embedded system. And then we have KPAD Technologies and we have companies such as ZF, Magneti Merrily and Continental. So these ERD company, uh, ERD means engineering and research development companies, they could be either uh, captive, they could be either doing services or they could be into product development uh, across the embedded software. So what this means to you? So these are the companies uh, who are offering a very good salary package for a fresher or when I say fresher, it's a graduate engineer trainee who have just passed out of the college or who have zero plus years of experience. So are getting into the fresh embedded engineer role somewhere at the average pay band of 4 lakhs per annum to 7 lakhs per annum. So on going forward, we'll try to understand some of the tools and technologies that's required for you to get into each of this role. So if you take embedded alone as a skill, it cuts across multiple streams such as medical technology, automotive, avionics, energy and transportation. So out of this, I would say in today's scenario, automotive is drawing the biggest chunk of embedded engineers. So what is the motivation? Why there is a big boom of embedded software development with respect to automotive? So just to give you an example, today um, in 2022, we have a car that sold in the market for just 10 to 15 lakh rupee is almost having uh, a 70 to 85 ECUs or I would say um, somewhere between 75 to 100 electronic control units. So the total number of lines of code that is running in today's vehicle is somewhere close to 100 million lines. So in 2030, when we could able to see the vehicle is completely electrified and uh, at various levels of ADAS feature that's hitting the road, somewhere in 2030, we'll have uh, 1 billion lines of code that's going to get into every car that we are seeing today. So the biggest motivation is, uh, so we want 1 billion lines of code to be developed, to be verified and to be validated. So, which requires enormous amount of workforce with the, or I would say, skilled workforce who can able to take up this job and who can able to implement and industrialize and make this happen somewhere by end of 2030. So, this is about the motivation. Now, let's have a detailed look on what are different tools and technologies that you want to learn to get into each of this job title. So the very first job title, it's very clear, it's device driver developer who is developing the base software that's going to get into the uh, core microcontroller. So the very first skill that this particular engineer need to have is very strong inclination for writing and debugging or reading C program. And should have a very clean interest towards uh, developing code. Then post that, you need to develop skills on bare metal programming. So when I say bare metal programming, you should be in a position to understand how to write a code for a microcontroller from scratch and how to build a a basic working application, which requires device driver development of multiple peripherals that's there in the microcontroller. This is what I mean by bare metal programming. And uh, if you have understood the concept of bare metal programming, so you should be having a possessing a very good hands on experience on a 32 bit ARM target, preferably if it's ARM, it's good. And uh, that should have that particular microcontroller should have peripherals such as I2C, SPI, UART, and CAN. Uh, so if you have practical experience on writing drivers for these peripherals, then you are the apt and right fit for device driver development role. So at the third skill, which is very important as the debugging skill. Let's understand, uh, 
if you have given with a code that was written by somebody else or that was written by your peer person so debugging is something that allows you to uh, run the code or execute the code line by line so that you can able to figure out where there is a bug or where there is a issue so debugging skill along with the hardware exposure along with the fundamentals of bare metal programming is a very good combination that if you want to become a device server developer so coming to the second job title which is mbd or uh, which is application software developer so almost i would say uh, 90 percentage of your uh, automotive avionics applications are created with model based development workflow so when i say model based development tools that is commonly used is matlab simulink state flow so you should be in a position to convert your, the given requirement into a workable code or workable application that is created with tools like simulink or state flow this is a very 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 important skill that if you want to become a application software developer in some of the biggest oems so the third important job role as i told you it's on verification validation engineers so the key skills that are required for verification and validation engineers we have put that into two why because as i told you the verification and validation at is run usually done at both on the application side or on the base software side let's say if you are becoming a verification validation engineer at the base software side so you need to know some of the tools such as vector cast ldr it is suit and you need to have a very solid understanding on can protocol or can drive a stack and how to work along with tools such as kenoe how to write capel scripting and how to automate the test cases for validating these things and very importantly you need to know how to use or you need to have a very solid understanding on uds so then you need to know what is mean by unit testing integration testing code coverage and what is mean by static analysis this is one set of skills that is going to prepare you as a Uh, verification and validation engineer so the other set of verification and validation skill that's quite popular in the market on the application domain side which i would call it as doing the static analysis from the code that's generated and verifying validating the model that someone has prepared or that you have prepared so the first step of verification would be doing a map guideline check so whether the model has met some sanity check or met some initial uh, clarity or initial readability so then post that you do model in loop simulation software in loop simulation and generate code for the code on the real hardware and test it by connecting with a real time machine and do a hardware in loop simulation so these are different set of other uh, verification and validation activity that's usually carried out on the application domain side now having all this understanding so who can able to become a embedded engineer so i have laid down some of the prerequisites and criteria so you should be ideally coming from a circuit branch such as ec triple e and i and post that you need to have a very strong inclination towards a writing c program that's really mandatory third one is a logical and analytical skill a good amount of logical and analytical skill just to interpret the requirement convert that into a actual logic so with having all this understanding or with meeting all this prerequisite if you are an aspiring engineer what you can start or where you can start with so for that uh, skill link as a company uh, we are uh, proud to announce that we are starting a, a live offline batch in our skill center coming this july 6th so where uh, we have a very good infrastructure set for running up a program like this and we have a very good qualified faculties who can able to support you on uh, getting your dream job so looking forward to meet all of you in our pgs uh, embedded offline skills and program thank you